Hello again team, it's Jess or Jessica Ren and welcome back for another video. Last week I brought you a video of spread ideas for when you're moving, but what if you're not quite there yet? What if you're still looking for a new home? Then this video is for you. Today we're looking at spread ideas for when you're house hunting. These can apply to both people who are looking to buy and those who are looking to rent. And if by the end of the video there's an idea that you have that I haven't mentioned, please do let us know in the comments. Without further ado though, let's get into our ideas. Up first we have a savings tracker, because housing is ridiculously expensive. You can make this decorative like the one we have here, or something a bit more straightforward. It's also good to consider the different costs associated with getting a house, and saving towards each of those. So not just the cost of your deposit, but also saving for the lawyer's costs, any money that you want to put towards new furniture, etc. On the bottom here we have a very related budgeting layout. As I said, getting a house is expensive, and it's good to, before you start looking for a place, consider how much you can actually afford in terms of your home. You can include information like how much you're going to be getting from the bank if you're getting a loan, how much you're getting from your family, if that's relevant to your situation. You'll want to break your budget down into the different things that you need to budget for. So like we said, deposit, lawyer's costs, building reports, any furniture you want to buy, etc. It's important to be realistic with your budget because you don't want to overextend yourself and end up in any awkward situations. Leaving money considerations behind, next we have a page dedicated to where you're looking for your new house. This could be a simple list of suburbs or something a bit more visual like this one. So on the map I have here I've got all of the different suburbs in the Wellington region and what I could do is highlight any of the ones that I do want to consider. Depending on the area you're looking in and also the size of your map, you could also put in some markers for places of interest. So schools or your workplace, that kind of stuff. Over the next page, the next idea is a layout of where you list what you actually want in a house. So what are your essentials or your non-negotiables, the things that you must have in your new place, and what are the things that really are just kind of extras or would be nice to have? By listing out the requirements specific to you and whoever you're moving with, it can really help to reduce the number of places you actually bother going and doing a viewing for. For example, when Vogel and I were looking for our home, we knew that we wanted to have a double garage and the bathroom had to have a separate bath shower rather than a bath shower combo. This helped us eliminate a bunch of places just from looking at the listing pictures and it meant we could spend more time and attention looking at the places that would actually be a better fit for us. Under this though we have a related idea, which is a checklist of things to consider or check during a house viewing. When you go to a house or apartment viewing, you can easily forget to check certain things, which would help to make sure the property is suitable for you. Having a list to go through while you're there, just to make sure that you do a thorough inspection, could be a good idea. Depending on how you set up this list, you may want to make it photocopyable or maybe even use a printable version instead, just so that you can actually check things off for each of the viewings that you complete instead of having to rewrite the list or something like that. Otherwise, you could set this one up more of a markbook style, so having a bunch of columns down the side for each of the places you're viewing, and then you can check them off for each one and still only use the one page. On the right here, we have the related idea of house viewing notes. This can be set up ahead of time with things that you deem to be most important, whether that be examples I have here, or things like rates, the closest services, the distance to your work, anything really that you find important. If you are looking at rentals rather than places to purchase, you could also list things down like the rent or the bond amount, what utilities are included in the rent, how often the rent is paid, if there are any flatmates and if there are, who are they, etc. It would also be good in your notes to have some kind of an identifier for the place. So for example, the place with the pond, or the place with the weirdly shaped closet in the bedroom, or the place that you figured out was owned by your university lecturer when you saw her family photos on the wall. <laughs> when we first went house hunting, there was a point that we did 13 viewings in one day, so being able to distinguish between those properties was pretty important, and note pages like this, which are preset up, could be really useful. At the bottom here, we have the houses viewed list idea. This could include information like the address of the place, the suburb, the year built, really anything on this list or anything else. To give you a look at what this one would actually look like, because this is a spread that we did set up when we were first house hunting, you can see that the information that Vogel and I included was address and suburb, the number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, 
the type of car parking, so whether it had a garage or a driveway. We had the RV and the IV, what type of sale it was, a colour code for how we felt about the property and whether we pursued it. In addition to that information, you could also have some tick boxes for things like ticking whether you've viewed the place, whether you've done a second viewing, whether you're going to pursue it, if you've gotten bank approval for the place, if you've received the documents from the agent, when you've submitted your offer and whether you've heard back. It could also be worthwhile listing how much you offered as well, just to see if there are any trends. Flipping over, and our next idea we have to turn the notebook for, but this is a house hunting Kanban board. This is split into columns for possible candidates, places that you want to view, places that you want to put an offer in on, and the places you're waiting to hear back for. I've also included a space nearest the spine of the book, just to record the places that you put offers in on and you weren't successful for, just if you're interested in tracking that kind of information. The way this one works is that you'd write on little sticky notes for each of the different places, and then as they move across, it's like saying this was a candidate place, this is a place we decided we were actually going to check out, we then decided we were going to put an offer in on it, and then we have put an offer in on. Across from this one, the next idea is a Things I Learnt page. It's actually kind of impressive to consider how different our house hunting process was the second time around, just given how much we learnt the first time. Technically speaking, we learnt a lot during both processes, and noting these down as a reference for your next house hunting experience might be a good idea. Knowledge we don't use very often has a way of escaping our minds. Question of the day for you though, what's your living arrangement like? I mean this in a non-creepy way, and of course only share what you're comfortable with sharing, but do you own your own home? Do you rent? Are you living with your parents or a partner? I'm just curious to see what the different arrangements we have in our community are. As you know, I live with my partner Vogel, no kids or pets, in a house that we own, currently that shares a wall with an adjoining property, but soon we'll be moving into a standalone house. Hopefully you guys found these house hunting layout ideas helpful though, and if you did, please do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. As always team, thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. Until next time, bye!